there's news abuzz uh, in the DMD community of a of a new book out. Oh, yes, a new book. They've got a few slated for release actually, um, but uh, but the latest one that got leaked um like rain through a sieve only a couple of days ago <laughs> was the uh candle keep mysteries um which is the new one from dnd coming out in march you've heard yeah. about that haven't you ross yes it is 17 short standalone dnd adventures uh designed for characters 1 to 16 um so very good if you want to do maybe a one shot um each uh adventure begins with uh, the discovery of a book. And then each book is a key to a door behind which danger and glory await. Um, so yeah, they said that you can use this as a one shot. It's also got some information of, on Candlekeep uh, for those guys, people that want to base it in Candlekeep. Um, and it's also got a, a poster map of the library fortress. I assume that's in Candlekeep. Yeah, um, Candlekeep is yeah. the library Baldur's Gate fortress. one. Yeah. yeah so you get a very detailed map then there's like there's loads of new writers i think isn't there scott uh, uh yeah they seem to have gone yeah. with taking a lot of new newish talent they're all people that have written bits and stuff for the dnd community before but they're not people who have not all of them are people who have like committedly like you see a new a lot of these people uh talking about the fact this is their first like major break on a big big D D book uh which is a nice thing they seem to be like getting new people involved um there's a lot of writers on this and they each have written one adventure each uh what's nice about it i think is that they they can be like standalones or they can be slotted into a campaign like a character characters finding a book is fairly easy to work in um also it's a nice little uh, hint to the festival of san jordi in in catalonia uh, in spain where they uh they give books and flowers to each other um, like as a as like a weird literary Valentine's Day. Oh, um, that does sound nice. Yeah, we've had uh, Chris chipping in on the chat. Uh, apparently, the limited edition cover is beautiful yes. in capital letters. Yeah, and um, and nice. Candlekeep is the library fortress. Um, yeah. So, yeah. am I to gather then? To, so you could, as a as a GM, you could have your party stop by Candlekeep and then just chuck him one of these books that's a suitable level as a sort of little fun side thing, and then uh, carry on with your adventure. Yeah. Yes, I think so. That's I think really I don't cool. think you even need to be uh, in the vicinity of Candlekeep. Yeah. For all of them. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, you could. Also, it's quite famously hard to get into Candlekeep unless you've got a mate who's a high level wizard. Uh, you've got to d deliver like a book that's worth like, over a thousand gold pieces or something in order to get in for the first time. Um, like it's a task. You've got to you've got to contribute to knowledge. Wow. Um, yeah. Candle keeps also on the Sea of Swords, which every winter freezes over entirely. So, like a lot of that fortress, already quite hard to get into, uh, like freezes over. So, just getting around, if <laughs> depending on when you set your campaign, just like having a little mystery where you're trying to, you know, uh, murder she wrote around a little candle lit fortress, and then just frost through the windows yeah. at one point. <laughs> yeah. Solid frost, walls of ice. Uh, uh oh, uh, um, which might be a bit of fun as well. well. I bet they're the jolliest librarians in the world. Yeah. Um, excellent. Well, that sounds really, what's, really cool. What's it called, Ross? So it's called Candlekeep Mysteries. Um, nice. It We've got a price point for it, yeah. It is uh, $49.95. Uh, nice. So that's probably about 30 quid, I think, probably. Um, back as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's a hard that's hard cover. Um, you, it's available. Uh, it's released on the sixteenth of March. Uh, so yeah, go and if you want to have a little one shot in Candlekeep with some people, levels one to sixteen, uh, do it. Go out and buy it. It's got some. Um, sounds they've got some nice uh, little items, obviously, as well. I think they're releasing some new monsters with it as well. So get prepared for book golems. <laughs> oh, <laughs> book golems. Yeah, um, mm. yeah and uh, Matt's confirmed it is thirty quid on D and D beyond pre-order so if that yeah, does sound nice. up your street get on there and uh, and pre-order that book i got the um, conversion right yes yes well done ross man yeah, um so dan have you got uh, have you got a bit of uh, news to throw into the uh, the, the shared arena i've got some news it's very exciting I'm gonna, hopefully i don't turn green when i turn behind no me no no, no all things considered you're you're fine oh oh Green, He's green, reaching green, into green, Dangerous green. Wednesdays and he pulls oh, forth. We've got exciting stuff. So we've got, this is our, um, uh, this here is the advanced GM screen. Um, there's also some spell cards. We've got the primal spell cards. 
and the arcane spell cards and that is all stuff that our patrons have bought for us that's all new kits that we have which largely we can use the gm screen the cards we can't use until we're out of lockdown and back recording together again uh, but it means that we can start doing fancy stuff uh, so we can be more accurate with our spells as we get more into into more combat episodes. Uh, and the GM screen has, it's great. It's, it's a really nice idea to do like, because they brought out a standard GM screen when the game launched. Uh, and now the idea of this one is for if you played the game for a year or so and you kind of have learned like what actions in combat are and things like that, but maybe you want a few of the numbers, um, then it's got those. So it's got things like you, it's got all the stats you need to make a trap on the fly. Ooh. so if you're like you're level 13 and it's like okay i need a level 13 trap and it's like okay here's what the hit to hit number is here's how much damage it does um just that's all you need to do come flavor the rest yourself sounds- so it just lets you make appropriately leveled um things uh, to throw at people out that, of there so it's sounds- really nice we've used it on a couple of episodes that are coming up that we've already recorded and it was a godsend for some of them uh, for stuff like healing and like how much damage drum can heal with his um with um didn't you, and stuff yeah mm. didn't didn't you say it's also got um things like uh dc ratings uh so yeah, you can quickly at a this, glance just have a quick look it's got all of the dcs by level because that's the you know that's that's kind of the one of the key things about second edition is that um there is basically a dc for most tasks and it's based on the party level um and so knowing what that number is it just lets you make a challenge immediately and you can just be like this needs to be hard it's a thievery challenge okay the dc is this and it's kind of you adjust it a bit but you knowing that baseline number for your party is really really helpful and that has the table on there straight away for it Fantastic. Um, once i start getting really clever i'll start having notes about you guys on it and i'll have like your acs and for now it's pretty good oh sweet sweet and just very quickly uh scott and ross as gms would you uh, would you welcome such a thing Yes, I. Um, it, the similar one for D and D, which has a lot of really useful stuff on the back. I think um, I, I have barely looked at um, so all this. All this. Use, and my players have to keep telling me it's like you know you could just look at the screen that you're using. Obviously, you don't use the screen that much for online games, but I do forget to use it. However, having the stats to make a trap on the fly does sound pretty useful. What about you, Ross? You into fly traps? I do like trapping my flies. Um, so, yeah, I think I've got like a GM screen for D&D and I, I used it when we were meeting up in the pub. Uh, this probably leads us on to what we're going to talk about. But like, um, first. yeah, um, but like I obviously don't use it at the moment because one, I'm not doing D&D fancy uh, 5e. Uh, and two, obviously, it's harder to do it when you're on Zoom because you've just got Otherwise, you'll just have a screen in front of you and you won't be able to see anything. I'm cool um, with that. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine yeah. Dan has like uh, just around his immediate space, just like yeah. a, a section here for the GM screen, notes over here, three oh, yeah. screens open. The scribes of Candle keep scurrying through the other bits of things he needs down by the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like just an entire like war room. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, pretty I'm, sure. up to, I'm up to two monitors, an iPad, a phone. Uh, a stack of books on a chair next to me and the GM screen. And it's still not quite enough to run the game as tightly as I want to. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Um, uh, Chris uh, put in the chat as well. Uh, he printed out his own stuff to put over the official DM screen. He has. So there you go. There's lots of flexibility there. So that's really cool, Dan. Excellent news. And thank you, patrons. Mm. Um, have you got another piece of news for us, Dan? Or is it... Um, I've, I've got a minor one. If you're waiting on the uh, the WizKids games uh, minis, which are coming out for Pathfinder Battles, I don't know anyone who plays Pathfinder Battles. I think it's a separate game system. But basically, they do uh, pre-painted minis uh, for Pathfinder Ooh. based on particular um, ideas. So they're doing a Darklands section at the moment with lots of creatures from that. The miniatures look beautiful. Um, they've been delayed a bit because of everything that is happening with the world. Fair. Um but uh, they're coming out in the uh, second, I think, second week of February. Um, or uh, yeah, February, February the third, they come out. There you go, first week of February. Uh, they're coming out, and you'll be able to buy those from uh, local game shops, which again may feed into what we're talking about uh, today. Yes. Um, but you can order them online as well. So if you want to have a look at them, jump on the Paizo blog because they are like there's a giant frog on there that is just oh, gorgeous, and, and they're not tied to a particular AP. So if you just want some good monster minis they are worth having a look at. 
Fantastic. Well, that sounds uh, that sounds very very exciting. And um, uh, Scott and Ross, have you got another piece of news? Just no, not news. Just a tiny little thing I wanted to mention. I played oh, yeah. my first ever game of Spire uh, recently uh, by Grant Howitt, the wonderful right. fantasy punk uh, dark elf, high elf setting um, in a pseudo corrupt city. And I would love to hear if any uh, Dangerlings or anybody else have played it because I would love to hear other people's play experiences of this game. I think the setting is phenomenal. It's so well written. There's so much love poured into its dark little heart. Um, and I would highly recommend it for, for anybody playing slightly stealthy, politically saboteur kind of games i would love to hear anybody else's play experiences of spire but that's all from me yes indeed so that's another uh, hearty recommendation there for spire.